Hey, this is Bill for Sparky Channel. And today I'm really honored to have with us Greg Rhodes from Leviton. He's a, a marketing executive. Is that is that right? Correct. Director of Marketing for Smart and New Technology Products, officially. <laughs> right, right. And I put up a little video uh, yesterday um, asking my viewers to give me questions. And boy, they just flooded in. I have three <laughs> pages of questions. So That's awesome. Yeah, uh, my viewers are fabulous. Agreed. The, the viewers on Sparky Channel are just the best. I don't think I don't think they're better on any other channel anywhere. These no, are the agreed. best viewers there are engaged right. inquisitive it, it's awesome yeah it's not like that on other channels agreed Believe provide me. good content bill what can i say <laughs> people yeah. want more from sparky <laughs> yeah yeah okay so please give us a quick overview and if you can include the information about the uh, anywhere companion switches sure. brand new ones okay go for it got a little demo one right here actually oh so, wow show us that again yeah so this is how and really the new way to do three-way lighting wow. control so no longer do you have to worry about is there a box there is there a traveler wire there it, it doesn't really matter you can stick it anywhere or screw it in to a wall box if there is one there uh, and we'll go over a little bit more about this but it is super exciting it's so thin right because everything's built right into the paddle itself. So the batteries, um, all the electronics, any antennas, it's, it's directly right there. So again, super easy to use. Top is on, bottom is off. And then you've got your dim bright bar here as well if you're doing three-way dimming. Wow. So yeah, it, incredible little product, uh, a feat of engineering for sure. So um, yeah, let's, let's get rolling here. Uh, we're really excited to introduce, gosh, six new products right now. A, a lot of you guys probably know that Leviton has long manufactured uh, Z-Wave and Zigbee products, things of that nature. Uh, Wi-Fi and HomeKit are now kind of fused together. So what that means is that you as electricians or, or end users, you install one product and you can use Alexa or Google or uh, Siri now all, all on the same product, uh, any combination of those three voice ecosystems. Uh, and, and in fact, we, we really just love bringing together products inside the home that makes sense, that make it easy, that are easy to install and easy to use, right? So we, we have a whole bunch of different products. I mean, you guys have probably seen our dimmers and switches and fan speed controls to where we can adjust high, medium, max with our voice without having to worry about the pull chain. Um, we also have an in-wall dimmer that I'm pointing at in, in my living room over there uh, that, that actually has Alexa built into it. So it has speakers and microphones in a three-way dimmer as well. And, and that's really important, like I say, at entryways where you don't have room for an echo dot or maybe a restroom where you don't want the cable strewn across the cabinet, right? So those products are continuing to, to all pipe into the My Leviton app. And, and these six new products that we're announcing today are, are doing the same thing. So uh, we really have seen just an explosion of the smart home this past year. I mean, the CDC, I think, recommends you actually clean and disinfect your light switches once every day. I'm sure we're all doing that, right? Just like you're testing your GFCIs as often as you should, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> so people are wanting to have things scheduled, whether it's that front porch light. We see a lot of electricians go into residences today and the consumer says, gosh, I really just want to not have to worry about this anymore. I, I want to come home at night and, and have my outside lights or my entryway lights illuminated already. Just, just do it for me automatically every single day. And, and I don't want to worry about it in the morning. So turn that stuff off for me. And then once, once people experience that, that, that's true automation, right? That's a simple smart home, but it's, it's real and there's a real benefit. And so then they say, okay, well, when I, when I run movie time, I want this table lamp to go to 25%. I want the overheads to do this and the fan to do that. And, and now our electricians are almost with a wizard based program, becoming an integrator in a sense, if they want to, uh, to pull all these things together and to be an expert in the home. So I appreciate you guys all watching and, and learning today uh, to, to figure out how we do that and what we continue to offer to, to achieve those goals. So like I said, really, a lot of people knew us as, uh, as Wi-Fi over here and HomeKit over here, and now we've unified those uh, in a new dimmer, a new switch, a new plug-in switch, and then also, which is kind of unique, is a plug-in dimmer. So as I mentioned, that table lamp behind me can, can go from zero to 100. A lot of smart plugs you see, especially ones that don't require a hub, a bridge, a gateway, a system, a panel, uh, they only do on and off. And, and that's not, uh, not what our customers are wanting, right? They want a whole environment to react based upon schedule or voice. So now we can use one SKU to do that via Google, Amazon, or, or Siri. So you kind of have the power of, of choice of voice, if you will. Um, 
And these anywhere guys built, th these are just incredible. So this is the dimmer version. Of course, there's a switch version as well that, that uh, does not have this little dim bright bar. But literally as I go up, it's, it's turning it on, it's turning it off. It stair steps the, uh, the percentage of the, the item down or up. If I wanted to, I could even pair it to this lamp back here and control a table lamp from, from a wall switch. I could just literally put it wherever I want it. It comes with a mounting bracket and the wall plate. So everything is all as you need it. Literally stick it right there, wherever you want. Just uh, wherever we're, we're, you want it. it it's yeah. incredible. Uh, we're, we're seeing people use it for accessibility purposes as well. Maybe that, that kid can't quite reach the light switch. Maybe that's why they're not turning it off as they exit the room, right? So, so drop it down a little bit or someone in a wheelchair that really needs that functionality but can't afford to rewire a house just to drop some out, uh, to raise some outlets or drop some light switches to make it more convenient for them. Gosh, this, this product for, you know, 25 bucks now can, can give them control over their, over their environment again. So uh, we're thrilled about this. Electricians are, are so excited about this. We gave them the product first. They've been testing it and loving it. Uh, they don't have to worry about travelers. They can do more control points, staircases, hallways, uh, of course, great rooms we're seeing, you know, continually being built in, in new home builds. So it's not just retrofit. We, we see this kind of going all over the place. Uh, and you can still use your hardwire, right? We still have the DDOR and the DDOSR. Those are our hardwired three-way versions. But now you can just do more. Uh, you can you can keep adding. And, and like I say, control a, control a lamp if you want to, which, which you couldn't do before. So um, all this is kind of brought together with the My Leviton app. And we're on really our third kind of generation of that app. We keep making everything smarter, right? That's that's kind of the the, prop, the, the property of these uh, devices, that the, the devices have little brains inside them, so they get smarter over time. And the app needs to be able to keep up, not just visually, but but from a feature standpoint. So we're seeing a lot of improvements there. And, and, and it's easy for electricians. They, they can install it if they want, walk away. That light switch is always going to work like a light switch, top on, bottom off. But uh, if they want to, they can actually get involved in the app equation as well and provide a lot of value to that homeowner. They can orchestrate scenes. They can create schedules. They can do fade rates, actually. How quickly do I want this to go up or down might be different in my living room versus my entryway, for instance, or, or my, my bedroom, especially. I want those to gently ramp up and down, not, not pop, but I want the entryway absolutely to pop on. Uh, and our electricians are, are doing that today and end users too, with uh, with custom settings inside of that app, um, bulb types, minimum, maximum levels. Uh, what do I want to happen when I go and hit that light? Do I do I want it to always go to 100% or do I want it to go back to the previous state that it was at, uh, 25% for instance? So all of those custom settings are, are what Leviton brings to the table because we manufacture all of it, right? We do the hardware, as you guys know, high quality, reliable stuff. But then we're also out there building the cloud and the app, and this is an in-house team. So we can quickly uh, and confidently upgrade and, and make sure it's secure. We recognize that as a, a major component of today's uh, smart home systems. You know, we've, we've focused on, on physical protection, right? And safety with GFCIs and AFCIs and moving into breakers. And, and, and we treat uh, kind of internet security the exact same way and with the exact same importance across all of our departments. So, uh, Speaking of the breakers, those, those things are really cool. I mean, being able to get energy information inside of that same app that I was just talking about, being able to, to see your kilowatt per hour and what your monthly bill might be, getting notifications if something has been turned on too long, flipping a breaker remotely. All, all this stuff now can be done from a single app, and, and we try to make it to where it's, it's not confusing to install. Uh, we want it to be faster to install, in fact, and easier to install and, and kind of step-by-step -step guide everybody through that process. So look forward to your continued feedback. Um, just uh, kind of lastly on my preamble here, before we get to these great questions, is, is the MyLeviton Pro program. So if you are a contractor, exact same app, and we're going to give you enhanced support. So there's a custom 1-800 number, uh, excuse me, custom 1-800 number. And then you can also earn rewards for every single device that you install for a customer. So we're gonna help you out. And there's a, there's a cool, actually we're down here in New Orleans. There's a cool grand prize for, for this upcoming year that you'll be able to ride in a real Mardi Gras parade down here in New Orleans <laughs> and, and meet, the, uh, meet the whole team. So really excited to, to kind of bring together all this fun stuff and, and again, make it more valuable for our contractors and more enticing for them as well to get involved in the smart home and, and to walk around a house and say, oh, you have, a, you have an Echo Dot on the counter. Have you thought about making that, that front porch light smart? Or have you thought about making this table lamp smart? Uh, really, there are so many opportunities as people connect more and more inside the houses. And 
as a professional, it, it's certainly our jobs to recognize those opportunities and to, uh, to help out the homeowners or, or guide them to the proper products, right? So uh, with that, you know, I, I welcome everybody to check out leviton.com slash Decora Smart. If you do want to learn more, tons of information, you can contact us, ask us questions, watch videos, all that great stuff. Um, but I uh, look forward to seeing some of the questions that, uh, that everybody had rolling on the YouTube uh, channel yesterday. So I look forward to that, Bill. Okay. One question I have right away is sure. I, I noticed there's two flat uh, circular batteries in your Leviton Anywhere switch. Correct. And how long do they last? Yeah, these, these can actually last. We, we advertise five years. We're, we're seeing probably seven to 10 years, depending oh. upon usage. So if I'm using this a lot every single day, five, five years. Uh, if you're really, uh, you know, just kind of an occasional user of this device that's far across the room, you, you might get 10 years or more out of it. And, and the range is really good too, right? I mentioned um, that, that you can have it far across the room. We're seeing 50 feet through walls, much further line of sight, of course. So you don't need to worry about, um, about repeaters or hoppers or anything of that nature. It connects directly to either a smart plug wirelessly or a three-way device uh, wirelessly as well. Great question. Yep. Okay. And they're super easy to replace. You don't have to take this out of the wall or, uh, or anything, you just remove the wall plate and then this piano style, up. yeah, this piano style hinge right here literally oh. just folds right open for you and then it clamps right back. Wow. Yep. That's very nice. It's a nice it's, design. It's an awesome product. Like I say, I, I am thrilled that they were able to just kind of get all this in there in a true decor of form factor that's familiar to everybody, right? Top on, bottom off, raise lower. Uh, we all know how to do that now. So. This is, this is great. It looks, it looks awesome right alongside smart or standard devices you know, in a multi-gang. Okay. Well, the first question I have here is, is a hub required? Sure. So no, uh, it's not required. If you do have a, like a Samsung smart things hub, we can tap into that. Uh, if you have another hub, those are typically Z-Wave and Zigbee and we make full suites of products for those as well. So we'd love to be able to support you. Leviton aims to be the, the best lighting control manufacturer that we can be. We don't need to, to own the hub per se. We just want to pipe into whatever platform you're using. Okay, okay great. It's kind of, that's, that's the old days, the hubs. <laughs> that, that's right. Hey, they, 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 they have a purpose, you know, uh, but yeah. what we've actually done is we've built in the intelligence to these devices. So let's say you have a temporary internet outage, Comcast, I'll pick on them a little bit. They, they tend to uh, go out on occasion, right? Well, this guy's still going to know it's 7 p.m. on Sunday, I was told that I'm supposed to be going to 75%. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. So even if you lose internet, you're, you're fine because we, we've kind of decentralized the hub if you wanna consider that with the Wi-Fi product line. Okay, here's the next question. Sure. Uh, is it possible to install a three-way smart, uh, three smart switches requiring a neutral if the power starts at the light and then travels to switch A and then B? So that's, that's kind of like a dead end. Um, no, at this, at this time, you, you require a neutral really at, at all the locations uh, in order to achieve that. So in a different scenario, like if you had a, a neutral at the primary and then nothing at the secondary, well, then I would recommend this guy uh, just kind of cap those wires back there. And now you do have three-way, but, but no, you, you, the neutral is a requirement at this time. Yep. Yeah, if you have a, a Leviton smart switch, one switch, you can always add those anywhere companions. That's right. And how right. many can you add? Yeah, you can do up to a five way with these guys, but then you also can still do hardwire. So you can have quite a lot of uh, control points there with a mix, a hybrid of, uh, of wired and wireless. Great question. Okay, excellent. Let's go to the next one. Yep. Oh, it's about uh, screwless wall plates. You okay. guys have different sizes of screwless wall plates. That's, that's right. And, and like six different colors, um, all through one gang, through six gangs, sometimes, sometimes more depending upon the color. And, and they just provide such a clean appearance. I mean, I, I was the first upgrade that I ever made in my house, actually. It was, well, first, first you go around and you align all the screws, right? And then, then you don't want to look at the screws anymore. And so that's where these guys come into play. Uh, a lot of our products now, especially on the smart side, are actually including those. Uh, single gang, single gang wall plate. So even if you have a multi-gang scenario, we know that you have some outlet somewhere that you could have a nice upgrade for free with uh, with a screwless. Great question. Yeah, I, I put those in my videos a lot 
where I'll, I'll, I'll put a screwless wall plate and people comment that, hey, wow, those are cool. <laughs> it, it really is a simple upgrade that, that goes a long way, especially in, in restrooms and kitchens. I mean, that's where we see them most often, right? They're easy to wipe down. They don't get any gunk. Uh, and that, that's one of the reasons why we like decor devices too, right? Because you can easily clean those as, as yes. needed. So, yes, yep. that's true. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so the next one's about uh, a load center, a level okay, load great. center. And you guys have sub panels. I know you got, got yes. the, the load centers now. And uh, what do you have for sub panels? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we do have a number of sub panels. Um, and, and actually, we're continuing to grow. So, I mean, the, they have a lot of specific questions I saw regarding sub panels. I would yeah. probably defer those to, uh, to our team at DS support at Leviton.com to go really in depth on, on that stuff. But um, yeah, absolutely. We, we've got them and, and uh, we've got more to come. Yeah, I, I'd like to add that um, if you have a 200 amp load center and mm -hmm. you want to run, let's say a 60 amp sub panel, that's that's not a problem with a Leviton load center. You need a 60 amp breaker. Sure. Now, if you want to run two sub panels, that's that was also in the question, you would uh, definitely need to have enough amperage coming in. Uh, and that, that's part of the um, permit process. You have Correct. to prove that uh, you, you have the capacity to run two sub panels. That's and right. You have to be able to feed that, uh, feed that device, exactly. And so we do have the LFTLA for phase power, but uh, more coming. Okay, great. Uh, let's see, next here, uh, what about combination Wi-Fi, AFCI, GFCI breakers for larger loads uh, is there a limit, you know, 30 amps, 60 amps? And uh, it says, what is the largest breaker for a load center uh, for 200 amp um, sub panel feed? Okay, yeah, so let me, let me chop those up a little bit. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> the first yeah. one being uh, Wi-Fi, AFCI, GFCI breakers, right? So. Uh, first off, yes, we, we absolutely have those devices. And what that's going to allow you to do is, uh, of course, we call it dual function, right? Because it's going to protect you yes. against uh, everything in that, in that equation. Um, and, and really, gosh, it's just so cool because there's so much information that you can actually get from, from a Wi-Fi device and having a smart circuit. And so we, we absolutely love tying those things in to, uh, to the MyLeviton app and being able to, to see that energy information. So uh, the highest kind of I would say amp amperage that we have for the smart dual function breaker is 20 amps, uh, but we do have 60 amp smart standard. So those would be non AFCI GFCI, as well as smart GFCI. We have 60 amps of those and uh, smart GFPE breakers as well. We've got uh, we've got those too. So got some options uh, in that realm, and uh, and we continue to grow those. Okay, excellent. So the next one's a real important question. It's about IoT. Internet of Things, sure, right, and security. So, perfect. Security is very a very important topic, and can you address that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, gosh, when it when it comes to our smart devices, that's that's why it's important that we can feed you firmware updates because there there could be something out of all of our control that we need to make sure we're protecting against, right? So, make sure that that you have all those devices, whatever they are, update the firmware. Uh, that's why that's why Apple does it for their phones too, right? Because there's certain vulnerabilities that even they can't control. And so you've got to uh, kind of feed these living and breathing things. And that's why in the app, we put that front and center. Hey, you have some new firmware. Uh, you might be, might, might be wise to go ahead and update this. So like I say, we, we treat smart security very seriously, just like we treat personal protection very, very seriously. The, the physical safety aspect, you know, using kind of industry best practices and partners, I would say. Uh, and, and unlike other companies, I think the differentiator here for Leviton is that we, we make all this stuff. We, 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 we do it ourselves. The entire app and cloud team is actually here in the United States with us. Uh, and all data is stored in the United States as well. So with, with our cloud partner. So we're using, uh, and, and I'll be honest, some of those data centers are using Leviton products, right? We do a lot of, uh, a lot of jobs for Salesforce, eBay, Uber, those types of things. Uh, and, and this is a big difference because we, we know exactly what software is running on our devices. We know exactly uh, how to control access to your data and, and ensure that there aren't anyone else uh, taking a peek at, at, those, at those assets. So 
you know, developmental work and, and, and hosting is not in some far off land that, that's outside of US law. Uh, all communications are encrypted. We're constantly evaluating and updating any new tools or measures, uh, rest assured that we can, we can continue to do. So yeah, I would say overall, this is, this is not something we take lightly. And just because it's Wi-Fi doesn't mean it should be any less secure than anything else you're doing. Great, great. So yeah, security is important. Yes, it All is. All right. Okay, so the next one is, uh, do the smart circuit breakers require a special breaker box? Great question. So, so yes, uh, today, and that's because we re, we reimagined the the breaker box. I mean, the first thing that people notice is is the striking aesthetics. It's 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 crisp. I mean, it is bright white, and it has a clear door. And even the breakers have super clear indicators and LEDs on board. And and we use what's called line side diagnostics. And what that means is that let's say a breaker trips, I can actually still see if that was an AF trip, a, a GF trip. I don't have to, to push my hand on the device, which could be potentially unsafe, right? I, I have that information. And, and, and we did it with a, a snap-on breaker. So you literally rough in the panel, put in your critical circuits as needed. And then as you come back for trim out, you just simply pop in these breakers. And, and, and why that's important for this question is because at any time, you can update those breakers to be either a surge breaker or a smart breaker. And, and, and that's really, really cool to give people that kind of upgrade flexibility. So a lot of builders are adopting this because they can say, oh, your breaker box is smart ready. At any time, we can add in a, a smart AF or a smart GF or, or what have you. So it, it's, uh, it's a really exciting time because we, gosh, it, it, it's just so, so different. And actually we've run tests and you, you'd think that without the pigtails, the installation time might, might suffer. Uh, it's actually 25% faster than our competitors. So we see a lot of excitement from contractors that can get in there and, and use different levels of their tradespeople for those different processes, right? So it's a, it's a super simple operation just to pop something in. I believe that the clear door on the load center is an option, right? That is correct. Yes, yeah. exactly. Not, not everybody wants that, but we see a lot of people going for it. I mean, honestly, that was brought to us from a contractor that visited one of our experience centers. We have them in New Orleans, Chicago, San Francisco. Uh, and, and they saw, if you guys are familiar with our structured media center for low voltage wiring, uh, it, it's a device that recesses into the wall, an enclosure, and it had a clear door. And, and the contractor said, gosh, this is really cool. If you, if you thought about putting this on the load center, how wild would that be? We get a lot more sales of that device than we, we thought, uh, that add-on device, without a doubt. Now, it is so cool, especially like in an MDU or an apartment where you walk past it. We've seen people paint over those for years, or, or there's even picture hooks that attach to them so that way you can cover it up, right? You, you don't have to do that anymore. It can actually be kind of a cool feature for the right customer. I see. Okay, uh, let's see what's there. Okay, how about surge protectors? Do you have a whole house surge protector for your load centers? Definitely, yeah. So, so again, that's that's kind of a scenario where it, it takes up uh, it takes up two pole and it allows you to just literally pop it in uh, to protect the entire entire residence there. So there's there's different variants. There's uh, there's thermal variants and, and hydraulic variants, and and again, kind of allows us to to meet the needs of the entire nation. But yeah, it's so cool to not have to add anything extra, which which we have right. We've done that for years uh, on other people's panels. We've we've certainly have whole house surge. Uh, products that we that we do a lot of business with but now we're able to build that into the load center itself where you don't have to have anything else don't have to run any extra wire you literally just pop it into the panel it needs a special spot on the load center though it's, it's that, right next to the uh 200 amp uh breaker that is correct right? yeah you, yes sir yep yep if my memory serves me i think it goes in the top right position yeah, uh, and that right. allows correct and that allows us to protect the entire panel then yep fantastic okay let's see uh can internet connections be hardwired or is Wi-Fi the only option? Some people are sensitive to electromagnetic magnetic radiation. That's a very important question. No, absolutely. And, and, and plus, I think in that scenario, especially if it's outside, like it is in a lot of locations, like I'm here in New Orleans, my, my panel's outside. Uh, there, there could be, you know, concerns with Wi-Fi extending that far, right? Or maybe it's a... a a separate location, like a, a secondary building, a pool house, let's say. We, we absolutely allow you to run ethernet cable to those devices. There's a little, a little uh, box in the bottom of your, of your circuit breaker that it connects into, literally hardwire plug. And so from a reliability standpoint, 
uh, from, from the example that you gave as well. We want to give people options. Wow. I would much rather run Ethernet cable. I do that throughout my house, you mm -hmm. know, because it's faster. For Correct. One thing, you know, exactly. I get you upload and download speeds are great, you know. <laughs> that's, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. From my router to my laptop, Ethernet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. A lot of professionals will say when you can go hardwire. Yep. Okay. A guy says, I just want to know what beach that is behind you. <laughs> 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 and uh, this is uh, Hapuna Bay, Big Island, Hawaii. Oh, beautiful. Uh, I actually have a green screen behind me. And uh, I took this uh, video clip, you know, when I was there on vacation. <laughs> that's, that's a beautiful shot. I love how it's in motion as well. I, I've just realized that I actually have a beach behind me as well. This is a painting from my grandmother yeah, of, uh, of Acapulco. So, uh, so yeah, I, we can both answer that question. I actually have a washer <laughs> and dryer right behind me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something you would want to monitor as a critical circuit from your My Leviton app. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> tied it right in. Didn't that, you? That's right. That's right. You know, I, I know one of the questions coming up here is about whole house fans. Sure. You know, I'd like to know that too. Do you have a, a kind of switch for whole house fans? And my particular question is, do you have a thermal switch that will turn on when it gets hot enough in the attic and it'll turn off when it gets cooled down? Right. So, so yeah, if you're referring to an HVAC fan, then, then the current answer is no. You, you would really need like a low voltage 24 VAC switch in order to control that guy. Uh, if we're just talking about an exhaust fan, uh, absolutely. We would use a, a, a smart switch, which can be, you know, even in the attic. A and then if you do want to control it without having to climb up the stairs or, uh, or what have you, you would just install one of these down at the bottom. So uh, we can answer that question one of two ways. Yep. Okay. But it's not a thermal switch. No, that's correct. Correct. Okay. I like those thermal switches where it turns on when it gets hot enough and then it turns off when it cools down. That's, that's right. You know, we, we do have humidity uh, devices that, that work great in bathrooms uh, that'll activate the exhaust fan in there. Uh, maybe, maybe we can look to something in the future of expanding that product line. So please do. Please yep. do. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, how about API? Uh, this was just uh, application programming interface. And I, there's a, a kind of a long question about API and how uh, Leviton um, participates with, with other uh, smart devices and so forth, uh, you know, as far as software. Can you address sure. that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and like I say, what, what we really want to do is maintain a highly reliable solution for the masses. And, and that that really means that we work through traditionally works with partners, right? We have a works with My Leviton program, and, and that is where really anybody can apply. We see a lot of uh, apartment uh, complex developers, for instance. They want to bring everything together with inside of the, all of those residences. They want to be able to tell everybody when trash night is. They want you to be able to rent the electric vehicle charger, just like you could rent a, a party room at those locations. And so. We, we do so many different things that aren't just Alexa to device or, or whatnot, because those are so common for all of us, but there are bigger picture things that we recognize people want to achieve here. And so uh, we have the formal program. And then as far as like an open API, which, which is probably more so the question, uh, I would say this to be clear, we, we have never necessarily ruled out or, or ever said we would never do. Uh, but, but our team's focus right now is just getting on these new devices out that, that have improved enrollment and Wi-Fi performance and a host of other features for, for everyone. Um, and that there are open, open uh, options out there. We, we see a lot of uh, Home Assistant is a great example that we see a lot of customers using. Uh, we see people using our Z-Wave and ZB devices if they really want full control over absolutely everything. Well, then that's, that might be the product for you as opposed to a Wi-Fi device. So. Um, you know, we, we, want, we want to allow consumers to interact with our devices with, with real security all the time and, and maintaining that ownership a little bit. So, you know, that, that is our top priority, I think. And, and if we do decide to enable a local API in the device, we, we want to make sure that all those communications are secure, not necessarily just leave it open where, where anybody can access it. So at least with the Wi-Fi product line. Um, Again, we just don't want to impact user experience. You know, how, how does this join the Wi-Fi network without putting it on the cloud? Or how does the device locally controlled uh, that, that, that can receive firmware updates from us, right? I mentioned how important those things yes, are. Yes, they so are. 
We mm-hmm. need to make sure that, that we maintain that avenue, if you will. Uh, but but we're, we're considering it. Uh, and certainly as a company, we, we have to consider how these changes would, would impact the majority of users and not just some of our, some of our really cool super users that want to do something special. So uh, something we'll continue to look into and, and welcome feedback on. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happens during an internet outage? Does everything have right. to be reset or does it do it by itself or what? Sure. So, so uh, I know we get a lot of questions first off about power outage and then internet outage. So I'll okay. kind of address both here. Yes, uh, and really the, the power outage, uh, obviously once those, uh, once your power restores, then everything just kind of pops right back up, right? It, it's going to say, okay, the router's now back up and I'm going to connect to the router. Uh, and now everybody's happy again. So you don't have to go around resetting devices. You don't have to reprogram anything. There's no dob, uh, no knobs or dip switches to, to fiddle with. Uh, it, it just comes back to life right after a power outage. So that's really cool. Uh, and then during a temporary internet outage, like I mentioned, uh, schedules are going to run. Uh, you're, you're still going to have your front porch light coming on at the appropriate time. Even if you're on vacation, you can rest assured that, okay, that, that thing fired up appropriately, e- even if my internet provider kind of went down for, for a few hours or what have you. Maybe they're working in the neighborhood. Uh, rest assured that those schedules and that safety and security aspect of your home is still fully functional. Okay, very good. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I have another question about uh, one viewer has a tenant that uh, he wants to be able to monitor electrical usage like for their part of the house, maybe that maybe one particular circuit, is that possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so you can measure energy consumption by circuit. So to, to directly answer your question, yes. Uh, so, so you can certainly install smart breakers on, on any of those circuits that you want to kind of, kind of, kind of branch out there uh, and feed the rental in that, in that way, or, or maybe it's a particular zone, right? So, so uh, yeah, you can, you can see it in real time. You can trend over days or weeks or months and, and see uh, what, what's been happening versus, uh, you know, here's where the level set was before you moved in and, and here is it now. So let's find the Delta and, and that's kind of what you owe. Uh, you input as well your your kilowatt per hour based on yeah. you know we all get that in the bill so you just input that right in the uh, in the app and it's it's going to do the rest of the work for you so pretty pretty cool to be able to see it either on a, a whole house level or to be able to break it out and uh, to kind of uh, uh, chart it against one another right that really is cool yeah. especially if you are renting a section of a house or or a rental that's on the same electrical. There you go. You just Correct. charge them what he uses. You know, no That's more right. arguments. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, and, and this isn't this isn't revenue grade. So I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't be uh, yes. uh, 100% precise about it. But but it does give you that good idea where you say, all right, I think it's 80 bucks. Uh, and, yeah. and and uh, we've done revenue grade for a long time in, in commercial spaces. You know, with our building manager is is the name of that product. So. Uh, gosh, think about a shared workspace. Uh, we, we can actually tell them this person was plugged into that outlet and here is that bill in, in reality, that, that is revenue grade. So uh, we'll, see, we'll see how much we progress and marry all these things in the future, but it's, it's cool to see that coming to the residence and being able to have that data right there at your fingertips, uh, right on the phone or, or on a computer as well. It's all available at my.leviton.com if you'd prefer to look on a, a larger screen there. Excellent. Okay, can all the information generated about your house, when you're home, when you're cooking and so forth, be isolated to a local v- VPN so that it's not accessible to Leviton on the general internet for privacy? Gotcha, so, so yeah, this is, this is kind of a, a similar question. Um, and, and I would say that the, that the answer is really no. I mean, not with the Wi-Fi products anyway, right? That there are, individuals that want to be able to do things when they're on site. And we have a Bluetooth product for that. So there's called the DDMX1. And, and that allows you to use your phone to, to switch on the light or maybe to create a schedule. But, but it's, not, it's not going out anywhere. And, and for those individuals that are really kind of concerned about that, that that'd probably be the product for you. Or, or look into the Z-Wave and Zigbee options, which can attach to a litany of security systems and DIY hubs and all of that uh, that give you even more customization options. Yep, great question. Yeah, that is a good question. Okay, so how about um, Apple HomeKit compatibility with Generation 2 switches? Yeah, that, that thing's awesome. I mean, it, like I say, previously with, with our devices, we treated HomeKit as its own ecosystem, and that's kind of how it started. We, we, were, there, we were there pretty early on, and so it, it was 
kind of, all right, everybody's folding into this. We're making it super easy for consumers. They literally, uh, they literally take a picture of the QR code and that's how you enroll it. And so we were like, wow, that's amazing. Let's funnel right into that. Over time though, the market has changed where, where HomeKit and Siri are seen as a feature of the smart home, not the smart home itself. And so uh, I think that's the differentiation that we've seen in, in the market over the past few years. And so now you marry those things together and, and, and I get the benefit of that enrollment, right? I can take that picture with my device, but now I can actually control it with whatever voice device I want. So I'm, I'm looking at a Google over here, but then I've got Siri on my phone and I've got an Alexa in the kitchen. So I want that flexibility uh, as an end user and builders do too. And contractors love that because uh, then they don't get callbacks to say, hey, why doesn't this work with uh, this voice platform? Oh, well, that's a, a different SKU. So it's really nice to be able to marry those things together. Uh, and you're going to continue to see that from Leviton this year. We've got a lot of exciting product launches, not just these six devices, but a lot of things that we're cooking right now in the kitchen to be able to uh, release to you guys this year that are, that are also going to work with HomeKit, Google, and Alexa, and Samsung, and Ift, and August Dorlocks, and whoever else comes next, right? So it's well, uh, so a re really exciting time to, to see all this stuff finally start to get integrated and start to be super affordable and easy for all of us. You know, I started in home automation 15 years ago, and I was handed a $5,000 touchscreen that did nothing uh, at the time. You had to buy the, the, the $130 light switch and the $500 thermostat. And to be able to, to walk down aisles now at our big box stores and see these products and have them super simple to install or to have our electrician professionals coming in and specking things and, and helping us, that, it's just amazing to me. So it's, uh, it's an awesome time. Okay. Here's the last question. Sure. It's one you've been looking for. <laughs> uh, it's, one, it's from one of my European viewers. And he uh, wants to know, uh, is this going to be coming to Europe? Great question. You know, we're continually evaluating all those different markets. Right now, we're really focused on North America, uh, South America, Caribbean, of course. Uh, and, and that's kind of Leviton's primary focus. But, but as an industry, you're absolutely seeing this technology uh, move overseas uh, to the UK and Australia. And uh, th those are really, really places that have a propensity for smart devices. Italy as well. Uh, you see a lot of them over there. So yeah, we're going to continue to see uh, what, what the market needs and, and what kind of support we would get over there. And if you guys think we need to be there, let us know. Okay. Man, you did great. <laughs> I, I'm really, I'm really impressed at your, your breadth of knowledge on this subject. I, I, I love it. I mean, uh, th there's a, a jazz musician with a, uh, a quote that I love. His name is Charlie Parker. And he says, if you don't live it, it won't come out of your horn. And to me, <laughs> that, that also a more modern version would be you can't fake the funk, right? You, you really yeah. need to try out these products and understand these products and live with them and see, wow, I didn't have to do that. It just did it on its own. And that was awesome. Or I'm sitting here on the couch and I want to adjust all this stuff. And why don't I just use my voice? I don't even have to pull out the app anymore. So I think that, that especially as electricians and distributors and everybody in that value chain, as they start to experience more of these things and, and understand the true benefits, then they're going to be just as excited as I am. So it's a, it's a fun time in, in the smart home and the connected home and pulling it all together. And again, we're just going to keep making it easier, more affordable and, and more connected. You can't fake the funk. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, did I hear you say we're going to have a, a giveaway contest for my viewers to for, a trip, to, for a trip to New Orleans? <laughs> <laughs> we, we can talk about giveaways in the future, but it, it would probably be uh, more so along the lines okay. of these guys. But, uh, we'll, uh, we'll take what we can get. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. It, it is fun. We are based in New York, uh, but we do have our smart team down here in New Orleans, and that's uh, technical support, engineering, product management, marketing, of course, and we call this the Silicon Swamp or the Silicon Bayou. And we take all that creativity that's down here that you see with the music and the food, and, and now we're putting it into the smart home. And so really, really cool to be able to do that uh, for, for Leviton and as a manufacturer, not just in the smart home. You know, we're even looking at industrial facilities. How, how can we make uh, wine manufacturers or, or food packaging people, how can we let them know more about their packaging lines and when something might go down, have some predictive analytics and some of that stuff. So look at the inform line. If you want something more commercial industrial, uh, it's not just smart home. So a lot of cool stuff going on. Okay. Well, Greg, thank you very much. And I also want to thank my viewers for the great questions.
Agreed. And I'm just amazed at, at how you were able to answer everything. <laughs> <laughs> Not an expert, but I play one on YouTube, guys. Okay. So if you do have further questions, DS support at leviton.com or leviton.com slash decora smart. Look forward to hearing from you. Excellent. Thanks so much, Greg. Cool. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it, y'all.